we continue where we left off in our previous video with the magnetization currents for phases A, B and C of a three-phase transformer. Each one of them has a fundamental component and a triple frequency component, 60 Hz and 180 Hz correspondingly. Here we see the magnetization current for phase A in black, the 60 Hz or fundamental component in green, and the triple frequency component in red for phase A, for phase B, and for phase C. The point is that the third harmonic current in phase A and in phase B and in phase C, all of those third harmonic currents are in phase. They are. Let's see what is the effect of that in connecting the three windings of a three-phase transformer. Consider three single-phase transformers like this one, which we are about to connect in the Y in the primary, like so. And next, we join the center of the Y, this one, to the center of the Y of the sources with a wire like this one. This voltage is a sinusoidal voltage imposed by the source, and the same can be said of the phase voltage for this one and for this one. Now, the voltage here is sinusoidal, which means that the flux is sinusoidal and the magnetization current has a fundamental component, I fundamental for phase A, and a triple frequency component, I3F. I do not add a subscript to this one because it's the same for the three phases as we saw before, same magnitude and same phase. So for the other transformers, we also have the fundamental component of phase B, a 60 Hz sinusoidal current, and a triple frequency component which has the same magnitude and the same phase as this one. And for phase C, the same deal. Fundamental component for phase C and triple frequency component for phase C. The 60 Hz components, the fundamentals for phase A, for phase B and for phase C, all of them are off by 120 degrees. When we add them together, we get a big zero, so that means that there is no 60 Hz magnetization current returning through the green wire back to the center of the sources. However, when we add together the triple frequency component of phase A, of phase C, and of phase B, the three of them are in phase and have the same magnitude. They do not cancel each other. They add up to three times the value of one of those currents. We have 180 hertz currents flowing through the primary of the network, currents that look like that. The voltages in the coils are sinusoidal and the customer is quite happy. We have 180 hertz currents in the primary network and that is not something we can just ignore. Now we connect the primaries of the three transformers in a delta like so. And we connect that delta to the sources this way. This voltage here and this voltage here and the voltage there. Every line voltage is a sinusoidal one because it's imposed that way by the sources. But because this voltage is sinusoidal, this one in this coil, that means that the current, the magnetization current in this coil has to have a shape like this one. It has to have a fundamental component, I, fundamental of phase A, and also a triple frequency component of current. And the same is true for phase B, fundamental for phase B, and triple frequency component for phase B, and for phase C as well. Now the question is, what is the current in the line, the line current? Let's compute the fundamental component of the line current in here, in this node. Let's apply KCL on this node only for the fundamental components. We say this current is equal to IFA minus IFC, like so. That line current is IFA minus IFC, at least the fundamental component of the line current. We are not computing anything for the triple frequency yet. But this component and this component, the 60 Hertz one, are 
sinusoidal currents that are often faced by 120 degrees. We subtract them like that and we get root 3 times the value of one of them. We know that. So that is the 60 hertz value of that current. What about the triple frequency component of the line current I3F line? We apply KCL here for the triple frequency currents, and we say this current here is equal to this one, I3F, minus this one, I3F. We write that. But this one and that one happen to have the same magnitude and the same phase. They are exactly the same current. We subtract them, we get zero. In short, there are no triple frequency currents in the lines of the power system. The currents in the line are sinusoidal. However, because the currents in the coils actually have the right amount of triple frequency, the output voltage is going to be sinusoidal and the customer will be a happy customer. No triple frequency currents in the network, which makes the utility happy. But because the triple frequency currents circulate inside the delta, the voltage the customer sees is sinusoidal. I repeat, the triple frequency currents, they circulate like so inside the delta, never leaving it. Now we take three single phase transformers, each one of them with three coils, primary, secondary, and tertiary. For simplicity, let's assume they have the same number of turns in the primary, secondary, and tertiary, and we connect them with the primary in the Y and the secondary in a zigzag, in a Z. We observe the center of the Y in the primary is not connected to the source, which means that the triple frequency components of the magnetization current will not flow. Then the induced voltage in those coils will not be sinusoidal, will look like that. And the same is true for coils in the secondary and tertiary as well. Those voltages have both a fundamental component of voltage and a triple frequency component of voltage, like this one. That voltage has a fundamental component of voltage, VFA, and a triple frequency wave of voltage. If you are assuming that the number of turns in primary, secondary, and tertiary are the same for simplicity, that means that the voltage in this coil is exactly the same voltage as in the primary. It also has a fundamental component VFA and a triple frequency V3F. The voltage in this coil has this polarity and has a fundamental component VFC and a triple frequency component of voltage. After all, it looks like this, but shifted so many degrees behind this one. That voltage is identical to the voltage that appears in this coil. Now, the phase voltage in the secondary from the neutral to phase A, VA phi, that is this voltage minus this one. Mind you, VFA plus V3F minus VFC plus V3F. Like so, that voltage is this voltage minus that one. But this triple frequency voltage and this one have exactly the same magnitude and the same phase. And when we subtract them, they cancel out. And all we are left with is only the 60 hertz, the fundamental component, multiplied by root 3 in this case, because this one and this one are out of phase by 120 degrees. The same can be said about this phase of voltage. And because this voltage is sinusoidal and this one is sinusoidal, the line voltage will also be sinusoidal. In short, the elbow voltage, that is the voltage from the center of the zigzag to the elbow of the Z, is not sinusoidal. But the phase voltage and the line voltage are. This is a very peculiar connection. Voltages in every one of the coils are not sinusoidal, but the visible voltages, both line voltages in the primaries and phase and line voltages in the secondary, all of them are sinusoidal. Because this is so. That means that the customer is a happy customer and we do not have triple frequency currents flowing in the primary either. The zigzag has other beauties that we are not covering here and it has to do with how strong it is to deal with unbalanced three-phase loads. Thank you very much.